Tristan. I hate Google Hangouts, man. Hello, boys and girls. Hey, hey I can hear you now. I don't know. Uh, this is Bakai. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I can't do a New Zealand accent. Pretty well the other well not the other day. It was an old video, but you reposted it, I think. That was uh that was pretty spot on. That was you my did. Durian Rider. Durian Rider, my my Durian Rider accent is just kind of like a like an autistic cockney mixed with Yosemite Sam or the no, Sylvester. Remember Sylvester from Looney Tunes? Yeah. Dude, you told <laughs> you totally gotta do like an, another video. I don't know. He's been a little butthurt lately, apparently flagging down videos. So I don't know. I don't think he'd care though if you did that again. It it was funny. That was yeah. Um yeah. So so we're we're on a stream and it's named Vegan Gains and Bart K. So maybe I should be Bart, you should be Vegan Gains, and we, we can debate. <laughs> oh god damn. Yeah, I should change the title. But... <laughs> I'm not very you know? it's cool. I'm just very literate with all this stuff. I just recently started uh doing live streaming and whatever this is why it's fun though because it's i mean it's just it's like radio yeah yeah but i mean like when you do it you i think you use obs i'm not sure but you you know you figured out how to pull up all these images and do all that other stuff and just obs well, yeah obs is it's really easy but you got to kind of have some bandwidth yeah that's another thing we gotta we gotta upgrade our internet but over here there's no there's no competitions Looking to uh, but allegedly squirrels chew through it, so it's down as Yeah, we uh we just got upgraded to fiber optic, and it's pretty nice. We have like twenty megs. Well, either that or five G, right? Five G, yeah, yeah. Five five G. I'll have to invest in some uh some EMP devices if that comes around. Yeah, allegedly there is fiber optic here. But I don't know, some rat squirrels have been messing with it again. <laughs> it's it's kind of wild. And this is what they tell me. How true this is, I don't know. But Man, anyway. You're, you're breaking up a little bit. You got your connection right now. I can tell it's shoddy. It gets, yeah. I guess with Google Hangouts or maybe just with your connection, it gets uh -huh. like tinny. You sound almost like, uh, it makes it sound robotic. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop uh, downloading the porn I was <laughs> Damn it, dude. <laughs> The tr the grandma porn, yeah, totally. How did you know? <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm just gonna keep. Uh, I'm just gonna close everything out. Hopefully, uh, on that. You get so, you get nice uh, spurts where it's really good audio. Every once in a while, it cuts out. It's not a big deal. Yeah, it's all good. Anyway, Bart K, man, I don't I don't think he's quite figured out that we're uh, males. Uh, depending on which way you go well i we yeah, it's funny because i uh, i was gonna have bart on the stream yesterday at, at noon and he thought it was two o'clock in the afternoon so um yeah so i was he was a, a couple hours later than we expected to uh to come on my stream too it's hard to link up with people in australia and new zealand they have weird time zones yeah totally and i can only really do it in the morning on so I'm not easy to get a hold of either. So I understand. But anyway, it is what it is. Good. But I thought uh, we got to know Bart a little bit better. I, I find that people, you know, when we make our videos, like we kind of, I don't want to say we're fake necessarily, but it's kind of an act to a degree sometimes. You're talking to a freaking camera, dude. You're talking to a freaking mirror, yeah, you know? It's, it's weird. Like, you're talking to a damn mirror. Of course it's, it's different than when you actually talk to someone. That's why I always like having people on. But it's hard to find people to come on that <laughs> you like talking to. But Bart was pretty cool. I like talking to Dave Feldman, Bart. There's there's a few people you. I'm always down to have you on to. You know, it's just there's there's a few people that are really easy to talk to, and then uh, you know, then there's some uh, some people who are not so interesting to me. Yeah, definitely. So hopefully, uh, Bart and Gaines can figure their stuff out, and and I'm I'm interested. Like I agree with you that. Vegan Gains is kind of a clown, and it's going to be bullshit versus science, essentially. So 
there's definitely that dynamic. It would be a lot more interesting to to have Bart talk to someone who's not as biased as Vegan Gaines. I mean, but Vegan I, Gaines, he's kind of a straw man. Like he, what he does is he runs his debates on his channel in a very specific way. Somebody jumps in, it's an interrogation, right? Yeah. Using a very specific tactic, and then he has a few diversion tactics that he resorts to automatically when when it, he almost has to admit that he's wrong. Um, and he just browbeats people and he he debates dummies like let's be honest you know he's debating yeah. a lot he low, debated me he debates idiots <laughs> low hanging fruit huh low hanging fruit like me <laughs> but, um yeah it's i i would like to see bart i don't know it's like i feel like he's a much more intelligent and well-versed guy it'd be cool to hear him debate somebody like dave feldman or something you're not even debate but just discuss some more in-depth stuff Right, rather than taking on, uh, you know, an incel from Toronto who's married. There's yeah, no I I agree, and you know, I take no sides. But when I listen to Dave Feldman and then I listen to some of what Barquet had to say, they definitely don't agree on everything. So it would be interesting, yeah. right? Exactly. For them to, for them to uh, talk because all these guys, all these guys who've studied cholesterol more in depth, they all have different theories on what's actually going on. Some of them are kind of agnostic on what's happening. They just know that it's kind of bullshit. What we've been thinking has been happening since the seventies, but um, so that's, these... that's pretty clear. I think as far as what's truly going on, I mean, it's all theories at this point, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I like Dave's theory though. I mean, it's just, it's obvious that cholesterol is involved. It, it's moving all throughout the body. Fat's moving all throughout the body. You slaughter animals. You see what fat does. Every yeah. single organ in the body is connected through these networks of fat. You know, the kidneys and the suet in an animal. It's like in a room in an animal. Um, these, your body is communicating using fat constantly. Now, and we're just, we're looking at cholesterol. And I feel like, uh, I don't know. It, it's like you're taking a, a telescope and looking at the side of a mountain sometimes when people look at, at certain things going on in the body when um, yeah and this stuff that we call cholesterol is encased inside of a boat as they say a lipoprotein and it's yeah. not you know we don't even the nomenclature isn't even perfectly correct so it, it that tends to um, confuse a lot of people but yeah i don't know it's it definitely and another thing i wanted to say is the fact that you know people like us who eat uh we're basically ketotic or we just eat a lot of fat and very low carb at the same time you know our metabolism is going to obviously is going to be different and you should expect to see more lipids in our blood right so the old standards that are established by looking at high carbers how to how the hell does that even apply to people who are on a ketogenic diet you know what i mean yeah. Same. I mean, well, RDAs are kind of a similar thing where it's like, all right, well, you need this much of this vitamin or mineral. And then when you look at look, what these vitamins and minerals actually do in the body, they're cofactors and enzymatic reactions that are constantly happening and communicating with different parts of the body. So it's like you're, it's, it's so much more complicated than this, you know, 200 milligrams of blank vitamin because, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. these, these things are in constant flux in their usage. And the, um, I don't know. Metabolism is just amazing. I feel like uh, anybody who's out there acting like they know exactly what's going on with this stuff is just foolish. And that's what these vegans come across as. You know, in the low carb community, there are interesting, nuanced discussions going on all the time about what the hell is actually happening here. You know, and um, and a I, lot I, of debate. People don't necessarily agree on everything. You nothing. Know? I mean, there's so many debates. There's so much. I mean, there are people who. Um, you know, get, get quite annoyed with each other's positions on these things within the low carb community. Just, I mean, veganism's the same, right? You got like durian riders, like Sprite and bananas. And, um, I don't Who know. Who takes that guy seriously? I mean, does anyone really take that guy's dietary Dude, advice? Durian rider is a scholar and a gentleman. I don't know why you're going to defame that poor man. He's been yeah. defamed enough. I never watched any of his videos, to be honest. I saw little bits and pieces, remixes, and I'm just. I'm just immediately turned off, but that's just me. I mean, you know, like watching Durian Ryder do biceps curls in the mirror <laughs> at different <laughs> angles, doing like 10 different angles within 30 seconds and, and pursing his lips at himself. That's, that's content, man. That's I'm stuff. pretty sure I saw him doing pull-ups with his uh, feet on a yoga Swinging ball. his feet. Yes. <laughs> swinging his feet up to uh, uh, do leg lifts. Do you see that video? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's, he's shredded, man. The dude's a beast. Yeah. What can the guy? You 
The guy is a world-class athlete. Let's leave it at that. He's a world-class athlete and a gentleman. True. Cobb the fuck up. <laughs> Cobb the fuck up. He's one of the funniest guys. That guy and dude, Nature Boy. Anybody? We got any Nature Boy viewers in the chat? Oh, Europe, Europe or no? Come on, peace reflections. Because <laughs> anybody been watching what's going on with Nature Boy lately? This shit is crazy. It's like this. Uh, it's not even about veganism at all now. It's just about like polyamory and this, this weird. He gets these chicks pregnant and it has these accusations that he's spreading diseases intentionally among uh, his cult members. This the Nature Boy thinks even better than Durian Rider. Uh, drama. You know, I've never been suggested any of his videos. Even like I, I get suggested all kinds of vegan content, but for some reason, algorithm doesn't like him. I'm not sure what it is. But the only reason why I know he exists is because of you, and that, that's all I need to know, to be honest. <laughs> Dude, it's hard because I because I found out about Nature Boy like over a year ago because there was people, there were people. <laughs> see, I've been watching too much Nature Boy. <laughs> there, there were people, not there was people. Um, <laughs> there were people uh, in the town that I live in that were kind of connected to him. And oh, really? people tr started trying to come over and there was like there were some dudes walking around like shirtless with like tattoos and stuff and like giant onk gold chains and shit um so i was introduced to nature boy by people that like somebody that went to his cult and knew him um so i i became fascinated with the phenomenon of them is he in south america or asia no nah, he was in uh costa rica and got kicked out um uh... Uh, and then he was in, uh, I think he's in Mexico now or something. I could understand why there would be some spillover. We're not that far from there. And it, it's kind of a similar vibe sometimes too. Exactly. There's new age people around. That's like they, it, the new age little hot spots. They, they attract all these types of people. It's because the ley lines. You're on the dragon line. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny, man. But the, so the Nature Boy thing got crazy. Like he had, he had these chicks... Well, he was in this polyamorous thing and he had these different women that were pregnant and they were saying that they were pregnant with these other dudes' babies, but a lot of people were making videos that it was Nature Boy that was knocking all these girls up. Um, he was claiming that he cured AIDS and herpes. <laughs> and there was like <laughs> this dude, Young Pharaoh. He's got Pharaoh, the magic stick, huh? Dude, Young Pharaoh, this guy, Young Pharaoh. He's, I, I don't know if anybody in the chat has any idea what I'm talking about, but there's this dude, Young Pharaoh, and he does like raps and stuff, I think. Um, and he's a conscious community guy as well. I think he's kind of like a We Was Kangs type guy. Um, and he, he makes these videos against Nature Boy and just rips them. And he, he got these private messages of Nature Boy saying that he cured herpes and HIV and that the girl who had herpes and HIV, she had a baby. Um, and he was you know bragging about that in this private message. And then Young Pharaoh points out, or maybe it was somebody in the uh, chat pointed out that Nature Boy was making videos talking about how he, he eats the placenta. Um, okay. And then... And then he showed the video and nature boys like zooming in on the placenta, you know, kind of like if you're zooming in on a nice steak before you eat it. Hey, wait a minute. Food. That's not vegan. And this was the chick. Well, it's dude, don't be racist. Okay. No. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But that's, that's kind of, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at on nature boy. I, that's how I'm, I was caught up on that, on that nature boy tea. Yeah, speaking of uh, eating the placenta, our goats will do that. After they give birth, they immediately eat the, eat the placenta. Uh, so, you know, are they really herbivores? Makes you right. wonder. Right, yeah. Almost all, I think all ruminants do. It's Cows just do so, well. like, so fascinating how we have these classifications, right? Herbivore, omnivore, carnivore, when there's really... There's no clear-cut line what's what, and it seems like... That's what I'm saying. Up. That's why I'm trans-vegan. <laughs> oh, come on now. I'm trying, dude. I can't eat a vegan diet, but I identify as a vegan. Some people when, take it seriously, bro. Like some people think I'm for real, huh? Yeah, they think you're for real when you say that stuff. I've had some people complaining, saying that they unsubbed you because you've gone completely mad. Yeah, well, you know, it's a price you got to pay for coming out in this world. It's 2018, born this way. Whatever, man. It's I don't know. I mean, 
like we have these ducks also, which I looked up. Like, what did what did these ducks eat? So that I don't feed them something I'm not supposed to. And they said, well, they're herbivorous. Most of the websites that I went to say they're herbivorous. But when I throw ground meat to the chickens, the ducks partake in that just the same. So mm. lies. Chickens will eat dead rats. Chickens will eat. You know, we send them the bones after we. Eat. They'll eat. You know, if you eat a T-bone, it's got some collagen left on it. They'll pick it clean. Yeah, I mean. I know you don't subscribe to uh, macro evolution at the very least, but like chickens are fucking dinosaurs. When you look at them, they sound like dinosaurs. And, and I mean, they eat what I would imagine a, a beast that size would eat, you know? Yeah, um, I mean, all birds are pretty crazy. They yeah. just, they're, they, they're very similar. I mean, all of nature, it's very, very interesting thing. Birds are like lizards for sure. Totally. Then they have lizard skin. How are your chickens doing? They're good. They finally lay more eggs in the last couple of days. They were doing a little bit less egg laying. We had like three eggs a day from 10 chickens for a while. That was annoying. But right now we're getting six a day. So that's cool. See, what happened is the weather changed. And well, same over there, I suppose. And when there's these drastic weather changes, they get a little bit under the weather and their egg production drops. We had out of like, how many chickens do we have? Jesus Christ. I don't even know. Like 50 probably. We we were wow. getting like. And you we were, feed. You, you don't sell any of your eggs. That's funny. <laughs> you have 50 <laughs> chickens and you're not selling any eggs. Where do they go? We, we sell some eggs, but um, I eat a lot of eggs, man. I just. Damn. I've been eating up to a dozen a day. And then, you know, we'll feed them to the dogs. And, it, you know, it is what it is. But lately, because the production is back up, yeah, we've been selling some eggs because, goddamn, that's that's a lot of eggs. But I still, I'll eat between six, half a dozen to a dozen eggs a day, like nothing. Damn. No. I'll, eat, I'll easily eat six eggs, but I just do the yolk. I don't like the uh, white. I just put the yolk on. Well, now that I'm experimenting with this raw meat diet, for the most part, don't get me wrong. You saw me cheating anyway the other day. Yeah, uh, I was going to try <laughs> to show you guys, but I didn't, I didn't have a um, camera or a phone with me. Dude, I fucked been, myself up, man. I would have doxed him. I would have sent it to Vegan Gains in private message. <laughs> I, I, I was <laughs> eating ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then Tristan like, rolls by on this motorcycle. I'm like, oh, shit. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, we were at the gelato shop. You just told everybody. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> no, I don't give a shit. But let me tell I you. Know. <laughs> let me tell you, for all of you keto people out there, if you've never, quote unquote, carved up, don't do it. Dude, if I, you use honey, if you eat honey, it's fine. Yeah. If you eat like a few tablespoons of honey, there's like, it's like nothing happened. That's what's funny. So it's honey the refined sugar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's that other stuff. Who knows Dude, what else? Like, I pulled a muscle the day after something that used to happen to me a lot and then i go carnivore carnivore for the most part and all of that goes away inflammation like muscle aches goes away the mm. day after i eat a lot of refined sugar i pull a muscle the muscle i used to always pull all yeah. of a sudden i got a zit on my face i never get that shit you know i'm i'm feeling suboptimal it's just it's not worth it man at least for me it's just uh, you know if i i think if you overeat on like fats and meat you can still get the same stuff because I've noticed because I like I was able to gain like eight pounds on a carnivore diet within like two months. So obviously that's not all muscle, right? When you gain eight pounds, yeah. um, they're not going to gain eight pounds in a couple months. Some of it was some muscle and then some of it was fat. But the way I did it was I pulsed honey in for like maybe a week. Um, and it's, it's weird because I almost have to force it, right? Mm -hmm. Honey's weird. It tastes really good. You feel good when you eat it, but it's you self limit just like with other foods. So I was doing like cream and honey to get the calories up. Yeah. Then I discovered high meat. Um, and if you want to increase your appetite and really digest food a lot better and assimilate it better when you're eating a lot of meat, I think high meat is one of, for me at least, one of the best tonics for digestion and increasing appetite. So it's like taking digestive bitters or something. It, uh, it made me so hungry. So I was able to eat three meals a day for a little while, which usually I eat one or two, um, usually like two meals. One can be bigger than the other. I was able to eat three meals for like maybe four weeks in a row. But at the end of it, I had like a few pimples and I was, you know, just noticeably less energy, right? Because I ate three meals a day. Um, so less physical energy. Um, 
And I could see if I kept that up, I probably would have like worse digestive issues and stuff. But we had weather changes as well. Like you were talking about the chickens getting off, right? Like I, when, when these weather changes happen, the fluctuations in the magnetic field or whatever's going on. Pressure, like the pressure will just drop. So like you feel like shit for no reason sometimes. Yeah. And then you you go to town and everybody's like (laughs) got the same cough or everybody's got the same stuff. Don't get me wrong, like I love the weather where we live, but it's a harsh environment. It wouldn't like if you just take a picture of out here, it looks just so like idyllic and perfect. You're like, and look like, at that pretty mountain. Okay, go climb that fucking mountain right now and no, see what you feel like at the top. It's it's <laughs> harsh. It's really harsh. Our humidity sometimes drops like below I wanna say fifteen percent. Like it's brutal out here, man. It's it's those days when you guys see uh Tristan drinking like a whole bottle of water in one live stream. Yeah, exactly. And then after that I'll have another and then I'll go do a sauna and then I'll drink and you know, it's like the 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 atmosphere here is weird and people here they use the river to regulate, you know, like they'll go to the river and they'll wash their clothes and then yeah. and they'll just kind of kick it in the river and they'll lay in there for a little bit. So there's things you can do, but if you're not getting in the water, if you're not like sweating or doing something, uh, these fluctuations definitely get to you. But the Ecuadorians are freaking robust, huh? Like they'll just go work, you know, every single day. And they never, some of them never show it. Like the campesinos who really work their ass off. They're used to this stuff. I mean, they were, you know, bred doing this. And and I'll never forget when we first came and we went looking for land and you know you got to walk up all these mountains and shit and there was this like 65 year old man tiny little guy and he was running up these mountains and we're just like okay dude you need to slow the fuck up like we're we're coming from california like, you know, like zero <laughs> we're, we're wearing birkenstocks buddy no 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 i had my uh, I, carnival doesn't wear birkenstocks on. guys i'm not trying to <laughs> i had my boat shoes on come on no, but like coming from, you know, sea level to where we are here and not being used to it. Like, and this guy's 65 years old running up this mountain, man. Yeah, they're tough people, man. Well, I mean, the way that some of these locals, some of my buddies, the way some of these dudes climb trees freaks me out. Yeah. Uh, so the tie a machete to their foot and then just climb up a eucalyptus tree, you know, 40 feet up, shimmying up half the thing and then. Yeah, you know, just start kind of chopping away at branches. Yeah. And you know, no ladder, nothing, a string and a machete. And just like, dude, Augusto, chill out. <laughs> and w- what do they eat? Pork, chicken, dude, and they'll rice. eat some pork and some rice. Yeah. Totally. Some of them use vegetable. A lot of them, like the fat ones use vegetable oil. The clever ones use butter. They're they're killing them with this Western diet now. I mean Dude, you see they get so that dude, it's so it's really sad. When you think yeah. of all corn, what's up with this corn stuff, man? The corn in there. I feel like I feel like the Dulles brothers went down to Mexico in the 1930s and they're like, let's figure out like how to like what what is the export product from here that gets people the most metabolically damaged and fat? And they just they're like, okay, we found this population that eats a lot of corn and they're all very round and they're all very slow. Yeah. <laughs> and what they did was uh just start exporting corn all over the world because they found like one little one pocket. I mean, it's just, it's so ridiculous how, how much like diabetes and obesity there is all over the world right now. Mm -hmm. Well, and the type of corn that they used to have here was like purple, red, all kinds of different size of grains on the same cob. Like it was diverse and it was their native corn that, you know, they were, Used not only were they used to digesting it, but they would ferment all of it into yes, a chicha. That's what I was gonna say. They're, yeah. they're fermenting that shit. They're not just eating it. They're not grinding it up and making tortillas. You know, no. they're, they're, <laughs> they're they're doing stuff with it. They drink uh, corn beer. Essentially, is what it is, right? Chicha, as they call it here, it has different oh, names. Okay. Oh, that's what they would do, dude. Yeah, yeah. have you read some of the uh, chronicles? Like no, Ciesa de Leon. I'll give you a book. You'll like cool. it. Yeah, it's it gives you a lot, man. We could do some. We could talk about it in some streams too, because it's that's fun stuff. Like the habits of these people were fascinating. On the coast, they were never able to conquer the Inca Empire. Was never able to assimilate the uh, coastal tribes because they had such an abundance of food, uh, mm-hmm. and they couldn't they couldn't trick them into their trade scheme, right? So there were other areas where people would have you know feasts and famines. There are areas where they would have herds of uh, of uh, vicuñas and llamas and uh what's it called uh 
uh, uh, the other ruminant that's really prominent, the other camel-like creature. Llama. Oh, the llama, no, that's the uh, alpacas. The, the Alpaca, alpacas. yeah. <laughs> those, they're beautiful animals. Mm -hmm. uh, they would have herds of those, 50,000 head in some of these yeah. valleys. And they, would, they wouldn't they would slaughter. In the Inca Empire, you weren't allowed to slaughter the uh, females. They could slaughter all the males. Mm -hmm. So people think that like <laughs> South Americans were... Um, we're mostly vegetarian. Yeah, right. <laughs> because they're exporting quinoa and a few of these other crops, which are destroying South America. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's just insane, though. So they wouldn't be able to slaughter the females and they'd slaughter all the males. And then when the Inca took over a lot of these valleys, they assimilated them into this empire so they'd have more strict rules. So the rules would be, in some of these areas, um, every few years they would they would do a hunt. Uh, and all the royalty from all around would come and grasp hands. 10,000 men, uh, and I think he might have said 100,000 men sometimes. Now, that I don't know if that was a, uh, you know, you don't know if some of this is exaggeration or not, but the claim was 100,000 men grabbing hands around massive um, valleys that are full of these animals and just closing in on them mm -hmm. like a medieval battle and, uh, and just having a bloodbath slaughter of all the, uh, of these herds because they would get so big. That's how no, much. they they definitely ate a lot of meat, and even when because they were known as good uh, farmers, also. But what they would do is they would dig these swells into the mountainside, where it would basically be like a a mound of dirt, and then it would be like a, a, what's it called a moat of, of sorts with water in it, and another mound and another moat, and it would just alternate like that. And it was, they had their own aquaponic system where in the, these little swales, there were fish that would fertilize the corn that they grew and the quinoa that they grew. Oh, the that's, I didn't know that. Yeah, because yeah. a lot so, of the locals, they still have trout. You know, they keep trout. Yeah, they totally. feed trout corn. Mm -hmm. Tilapia, which is, you know, an import, but high up in the mountains where the water's cold, that's what they had, right? Yeah, no, up here in Yaburado, they have, they've got trout. My buddy yeah. Augusto, his family's got some trout. Now they take river water, they siphon mm -hmm. it off into a hole with a you know plastic at the bottom. Um, but that's obviously yeah, my, what they would have done. My neighbor has some ponds too, you know, but they gotta bring in that cold water because the canal water is just too warm and it'll yeah. kill the fish. But yeah, definitely they so even in these remote areas where maybe obviously they were hunting, but uh, you know, they, they even had fish, like they they definitely ate meat and and that's I think this is universal that was our number one choice you know everything else was backup you know if we couldn't everything get enough meat we ate everything, everything else yeah everything else is if i have to i mean you've gone hiking in these mountains where there are no fires where people don't uh they just graze animals maybe but they don't grow anything there right and like looking at the native plants that are here you would starve and this is this is like subtropical area where you know, you would imagine there's a lot of plants, edible plants growing here. No, nope, there's not. And even in the jungle, man, in the jungle, they're so careful about what they eat. They'll eat very, like, it's not like you're just, uh, you know, swinging around in the trees, slapping no. hands with your And it's all seasonal up. anyway. All the fruit, like, uh, you know, grows in, in maybe like a three, two to three month period naturally, yeah, I mean, right? Who's going to get that fruit? You or a fucking bird? Come exactly. On. These birds get, we can't, we, we have mulberry trees. That give a lot of mulberries, but the birds will eat most of them. Yeah, it's just insane. These mythical like vegetarian tribes. It's if you were vegetarian or vegan, you didn't last very long back in the. You know, no, that means you're starving, or you're you know you're you're on your way out. Like the the neighbors who've got plenty of meat in their valley are gonna come over, take your women, some of your children, and slaughter the men. It's yeah. like this, the the vegan thing in the animal realm like more animalistic world none of these people are vegan man dude no. these tribes in africa still there's still tribes who who just recently uh not still but who just recently were uh kind of converted out of their practices of eating their firstborn baby you know it's like few, oh the shrunken uh, heads of the uh, what are they called the Shua. Shua. yeah jesus christ have you seen those in the museums yeah i've seen those in quito and and cuenca you know. No, just in Quito, the middle of the world museum, whatever the hell it's called. How many heads do they have there? 
they had probably eight on display. I don't know if they have more, but they have they're the the size of, yeah, they're the size of your fist, man. You're like that's yeah. a head. <laughs> and the hair's still on them, and they and they sew the eyes shut. They're like fucking close your eyes. My neighbor was telling me when um, there was a war with Peru over here uh, in the eighties, and he went to the military. He went to fight. He said that they would take these uh, natives or savages, as he calls them, uh, because they were because they knew the land, they knew the jungle, and they were very good with the bow and arrow. They didn't even like use guns. And they said that like if you upset them, and even though you were on the same side, right, the Ecuadorian side, but if you upset them or something, they would put a fucking arrow in in the in your in your back. Basically, if you did something they didn't like, they didn't give a shit. They would just put an arrow. Yeah. in you and and disappear into the jungle and that was all over like they're oh, yeah. savage these people yeah man no, it, south america is crazy the his the history of south america and you know very when you look at the andes or you look at the amazon what percent is actually populated oh i mean when people say the world's overpopulated i just laugh i mean if we really were like desperate and wanted to we would take all of our animals go up the mountain and disappear man like, yeah dude i mean there if if <laughs> you can you have you can only convince people that live in cities that the world is overpopulated of course and that's the people who you see online telling you that you have to stop farming that you have to stop having animal husbandry and we need to grow your meat in the lab there are all these people over here, at least in my valley, trying to sell these properties that are like 400 hectares, you know what I mean? Because it's just not profitable for them to, and they just don't want to do it. They don't want to graze cattle there, but like there's all these open spaces, properties that are 400 hectares. That have you know, never, yeah. And they're, and they're just not used. And they they're in the middle of nowhere and there's no roads to most of the Andes. Yeah. Like, dude, you know how hard it is to maintain roads in mountains? For cars, this uh -huh. car thing is a luxury. They've only had cars in my valley since the seventies. Yeah, you drive up to like a certain point, and then you're on horseback for two hours up to like a day. And some of these properties, how many heads of cattle could you have on one of these properties? That's four hundred. A lot know? of these people, they just have cattle up there that they never touch. Yeah, like yeah, there's I muchas vacas ahí. <laughs> and they just go slaughter one once in a while. They bring it down and and sell it for for slaughter. And and yeah, but those, that's toxic, bro. That's toxic meat. We're we're gonna we're gonna make it in a laboratory. Man, I'm sure you do the same. But like, I get these less than two dollars a pound fucking T-bone steaks. Best <laughs> steaks I've ever had. <laughs> so good. I like the ribeyes though. The ribeyes are a little better for me. But I'll try. I don't to even. I don't even know where to get ribeyes. I don't really care to. But like, Maxi, my friend. Oh, uh, yeah. The black rapper. And they have cowboy steaks, like two, like half, maybe an inch and a half thick. Some of these are so good. Yeah, I mean, the only qualm that I have is that it's really lean meat because they they take the fat off here. They don't really appreciate the fat. But then you could buy the fat for like twenty five cents a pound. Yeah, you get the whole, you get a big bag of all the fat and the trim yeah. for like nothing. But like, it's not, it's not marbled, right? Because it's not grain fed. It's not massaged like Kobe beef in Japan. So, yeah. you know, these, these cattle, they walk every day, all day, every day. So like they're fit, right? And they're lean for game. the most part. But it's it gamey. I guess people would probably say it's gamey meat if it's right here. If it's an old animal, it'll be a little gamey, but. Those livers get gamey when they're older animals. I yeah. like them. I like an older animal's liver much better. All these people eating calf liver, like that shit tastes like a soggy tomato, dude. It doesn't have much flavor at all, no. I like the older animals. They have this bitterness and this chocolatiness, and they get all kinds of stuff. Yeah, especially they ferment really well, too. Donkey oh. liver does. Dude, speaking of which, we tried three bottles of high liver yesterday. Jessica uh -huh. and I are about to have some more. They're so good. From December 2nd, so it was pretty fast. And... Remind me again, do you fridge it or do you have it in like a cold fridge? Day? And then a few times I rotate them into the cupboard for a day. Okay. Just because I wanted to experiment. It speeds up the process too. Yeah, I'm sure. You know what's weird? I had three jars and they're all from the same liver and they all taste different. Huh. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been keeping the animals and the kinds of animals all separate so I would understand why it tastes different. But to hear that from the same animal it'll taste different i mean same liver what the hell is that <laughs> i have no idea 
but they they're not that different and one of them we tried in the morning and then we tried in the afternoon and it tasted different in the afternoon than it did in the morning yeah i just i don't know this stuff is like still like very much like black magic to me but i'm into it and it works man like you were talking about digestion when i switched over to raw meat off the bat like i got a little flatulence i never get that with cooked meat right or partially cooked meat but when i went straight raw with eggs and whatever yeah i got a little gassy but then i started eating this high meat and it helps me digest raw raw meat better maybe i was lacking some kind of bacteria i don't know i don't care it, it seems to have made a difference definitely Oh yeah, and then you and then you look at how your dogs want to eat. Like they'll wait till the stuff gets real funky. You know, do your dogs have your dogs ever killed one tacos? No, but well, one time I they wouldn't eat that because it's that that animal stinks. But when we give them uh, meat or like a little entrails or whatever, and they're just full, they can't eat anymore. They'll take a piece and they'll go bury it. Every single one of our dogs does this. They'll go bury it somewhere, and then they'll bring this stinky ass piece of meat or or pelt or something, like a couple months ago, and they just like gnaw on it, lick it, and just <laughs> bury it. dude, they roll on it in that one spot on their neck, like on the front of their neck. Yeah, yeah. We gave one of our dogs a nickname we call it poop stripe because she'll yes. find <laughs> she'll find Thank like rat that. shit and roll in it it's like it's like fancy colognes and then she comes back all happy like look at me i'm, I'm stinky <laughs> yeah we're like what is that shit on your neck god damn what did you do because you, you know yes right you gotta like Jessica, you got to do it this time. <laughs> you got to clean it up. Yeah, you host the dog off. You know how like animals will die around here and people just, they'll discover them two days later when the meat is already funky and they're like, fuck it. They'll just leave it there. Yeah. The, the dogs just have a feast, man. They, they roll just, in it. They, yeah. they will love it. Exactly. So yeah, I mean, it's when you first hear about high meat, it's like, yeah, these are people who are trying to kill me. Um, yeah. But then when you first try it, it's like, whoa, this is uh, this is something very different. And to be fair, it is different because it's not exposed to all the elements. It's a controlled environment, you know, and, it, it, you know, there's no maggots in it unless you want it to be. So Dude, Derek Nance, he was like, yeah, some of the best high meat I've ever had had maggots in it and was exposed to flies. I mean, that to me, I wouldn't want to eat if it had maggots, but he said it was one of his favorites had maggots in it. So there are people that are way, way beyond uh, – our craziness i've just seen so much of that with animals because they get attacked by these bot flies that will put they lay eggs inside the animal and then these maggots come out of the animal it, and it's just it's just gross me out every single time so uh, maybe yeah. one day i doubt it but how do you do you give them that vaccine to keep that out no we don't give them anything but we found that now that we got mostly white animals the fly leaves them alone for the most part. Once in a while, they'll attack them. I don't know if it's the color of the animal. My or privilege. Because... Yeah. <laughs> Check oh, your dude. privilege, animals. You guys dude, are... animals are at least goats. I, I can't speak for all animals, but they're the most racist of all. Like when we introduce a new goat, for example, and it's not white, they beat on it all the time. They will like they'll kill it. Yeah, but when we put a goat in that's white, they'll beat on it a little bit, but it assimilates very quickly. If it's like black or brown or red, just a different color, it almost never gets accepted. What if you were to put a cow in there? What do you think they'd do? Oh, they'd freak the hell out. They'd try to kill the cow? No, it's too big. The cow would kick them and could damage them pretty yeah. well. No, if it's a calf, then they probably would attack it. But a cow, no, they respect big animals. They're scared. I saw the bulls fighting the other day. <laughs> it was pretty. Oh, no. Yeah. It was a brief, it was just a brief battle. One of them kind of uh, went at him and he gave him a little scratch. One of them's got no horns at all. The other one's got some dubs. Yours? Your animals or no? Yeah. We're going to get rid of them and get different cows. Yeah. Not we're because they're fighting. Them? Actually, the, the, we were going to eat one of those bulls because we got one bull. It's a Brahmin mixed with a brown Swiss and mm -hmm. it's nice. Like it's pretty. And then we have this other bull that's just like this Holstein, Criollo, whatever, you know. Like is Holstein not, like A1 or something? Like not yeah, it's, they're A1. I don't know what Brahmin are. Brahmin are pretty popular in Asia. They get big. Yeah. 
this the the dark one that we have he's he's black um, he's beautiful so mm -hmm. we might keep that one and get rid of all the other holsteins and get some brown swiss cows and they have a hump kind of like a hamel but closer he's got like a little hump on the back of his neck yeah, yeah. and he yeah. eats man these other ones you see them eat they're kind of like pussyfooting around grabbing a little bite here and there he's like a lawnmower he just sits there and kind of just net left to right totally so what are you gonna do you're gonna eat them you're gonna sell them or i don't know, you know? sell them hopefully because we can't eat them all yeah that's a lot of meat too much meat we don't have you know we have to get a bunch of refrigerators well hey i want to get rid of them now because i want to let the grass grow longer while we get rain for when we have cows that we can actually milk it's like i you know i look at the grass and the land as the resource i'm not the cows aren't even a resource right now they're just keeping it so where to where we can walk around on the land to where yeah. it doesn't get too you know the weeds they'll get too crazy but they'll eat it all fast and we have to supplement a little bit now with like that uh sugar cane stuff don't you because uh, i find that this happens but don't you get this like certain sense i won't say it's pride but like sense of security when you look at all this meat walking around your property and you're like well the world could end right now i think i'll be okay yeah, but then you get on the internet and you see these vegan. You ever see? I mean, vegan abolitionists are going crazy right now, dude. Oh, these God. people are talking about forcing lab-grown meat on the whole world, and I've seen these bot accounts on Instagram. I, they might be bots or they might be people, but just putting talking point after talking point, like uh, on Dr. Ken Berry's page, this guy with like I, it might be a real person. I don't know. Um, just was comment after comment talking about i would eat lab grown meat it's probably going to be cleaner and better than the the meat there will be no pesticides in it and this and that just all this shit how, how the hell will there be no pesticides in it when they're still using soy to feed Dude, the it's called clean meat so he the way he was doing it was like are you a fucking are you just marketing right now like is this because that's how marketing works you have bought armies that's not yeah. marketing is not on TV anymore. Marketing is through bot armies on social media. People don't realize how it actually works now. People are fucking dumb. They no, don't I think a lot that. of the I think a lot of the big vegans, the bigger vegan channels, I think they're sponsored, man. They, they do. It. They have a lot of sponsorship. Yeah. Mike the vegan, you see his video about lab meat, put it out yesterday. Oh, well, there you go. Lab meat's the future. <laughs> hey, Mike the vegan. Oh, I would pummel that guy, man. I just, I, I just uh, got done twisting my jerry curls. God, I can't stand that dude. He's just so dishonest, man. Dude, he lives in the Agenda Twenty One, little like stamped out. What is it? What do they call those houses? Those miniature houses that people buy? Oh yeah, the, I forget. I know what you're. Tiny homes. Yeah, he lives in a tiny home with like a you know ten foot fence around it, and sits there making videos about how we need to stop people from having animals on their land. These people are more dangerous than the fucking Taliban. Than the, they're the tofu Taliban. Yeah, it's just so offensive to me, man. It's like, <sighs> mind your own business. Do you want to be vegan because of how you feel? That's fine, but stop telling other people what to do. That's just, it's so wrong. I don't get it, man. I it's, lost a lot of my audience by even talking about this stuff. They're like, well, you just hate on vegans. They, they, I, look, if you're that dumb and you don't see what I'm really fighting against, yeah, you're off the fucking playing field anyways. You're just a soccer mom on the side of the game, and you never even seen a game before. You don't know what goal means what. You don't know who's got the ball. You don't know what the fuck's going on. So don't come and criticize me. Bounce. Unsub. Yeah, thankfully a lot of people are waking up because even though I haven't been making videos about this stuff very long, when I first started, people would just be like, why? Why do you care about these vegans? They're crazy. Like, these right. are meat eaters, right? And they're just like, why do you pay them so much attention? And I'm, I'm just telling you, this is, this is bigger than what it appears, man. This is a, a global agenda, which isn't to say that everybody up top agrees with it because no, I, no, I no. It's there is a power struggle. It goes up there, with you know? the flow. The flow of yeah. this all is going towards this Maoist revolution globally. And it's the same thing with the social justice warriors. It's the same. That's why the vegans are joining up with them, trying to censor their opposition. Yeah, that it's the same kind of attitude. They will hijack language. All of a sudden, you know, eating is murder. Uh, they 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 completely change what words mean in order to influence uh, young people who eating non-human animals. You think eating non-human animals is okay? <laughs> All this bullshit. 
Yeah, and it's exactly like the transgendered movement, you know, when they hijack the language, basically. And then when you don't speak the language, they want to censor you and, and you know, put you behind bars because you're misgendering them or you're not using the right whatever, you know. Sure. But, but, but I think they have to hijack the language in order to brainwash people, essentially. It's newspeak. It, it, that's all that it is. Language is like the root of, when you look at the occult and magic, it's like, you look at symbols and language. Yeah. And when you look at symbols and, you know, I mean, it's when you actually look at what like the, the actual dark arts, not just like media, which media is dark arts, but a lot of the people that are involved in it, they don't really know what they're doing. They're just repeating the memes. But then there's other people who study it at deeper levels and more subtlety. And um, yeah, I mean, you look at like Elifus Levi and all these old occultists and stuff. It's about words, magic, sigils, images. Casting uh, spells. About, about manipulating consciousness. So these people at the top, like, I mean, there is no top, really. That's what people, everyone's like, oh, well, who's doing this? It's got to be this person or that person. No, it's just, just this is how darkness works. That's how yeah. it works. That's how I see it. It's like, you're not, there's not like Frank Underwood at the top of the freaking shit pile. It's like, there's a million Frank Underwoods scrambling to the top of the shit pile. Yeah, it's an amorphous amalgam of just garbage, man. Human fucking <laughs> exactly. garbage. So it's like, yeah, they, these people, they just fall in line. It's like Mike the Vegan, like, oh, I'm, I'm going to go be a shill for big industry. It's yeah. like, no, he's just dumb enough to be to be brainwashed into these ideas and repeat them to think it sounds cool. Yeah, you he know? believes he believes the shit he spews, I suppose. He does. There was somebody on Twitter who made a tweet to me, and it was interesting. Um, he said, look... I, I listen to your stream. I agree with a lot of what you say, but there's this rule. You never attribute malice to something that can be explained by stupidity. And he got that quote from like uh, Jordan Peterson or something, you know, he, and it's, it's an interesting thing, but it's also, it's, it's really stupid. So I told, you know, I, I responded to him basically, well, I don't attribute malice to this stupid <laughs> comment you just made, but it's like, there is a truth to it, right? It's like, yeah, it's not always people are, well, this person's pushing this agenda because he's they're bad, bad people. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, it's like even Richard Branson might believe this shit. I don't think Richard Branson really believes it, or Bill Gates. They, those guys, probably know what's going on. But the people at the lower levels, they just they think it's real. Like they're into it. This is the revolution. We're we're fighting the oppressor. We're gonna save the world from itself. I get uh, this. Yeah, I get this attitude a lot, too, when I'll call someone dishonest or a liar and someone will come back to me saying, oh, no, they really believe what they're saying. And, OK, maybe they do, but there's there's, there's definitely some dishonesty there because they reject anything that contradicts their worldview. They'll completely reject it. They'll call that, you know, they'll put it in the bad category and, they listen to any of that, and then they'll just cherry pick the evidence that's so yeah okay they do believe it but at the same time they're very dishonest and they're not open to the truth so well that's the thing about me, right people are dishonest with themselves right people people don't know what they really believe they'll confess one belief but the way they live confesses something totally different well cognitive dissonance definitely yeah and that's why it's like okay yeah don't attribute malice to something that can be explained by stupidity but these people are so dumb they haven't even realized yet stupidity is the vehicle through which malice manifests yeah you know it, it's hard to say and you could be wrong about this or that person individually but overall if you're pushing something that's definitely not good definitely not for everybody the vegan diet specifically how good can you really be honestly how can you look at all these failed vegans over and over and over again. Every single day, there's a new one making a video complaining about the vegan diet. How do you look at that and just blame them instead of trying to readjust your your <laughs> worldview and 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 accept this new information and 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 you know adjust? How do you that that has to be at least a little bit malicious? Yeah. Well, I mean, well, yeah. the uh, the narrative is you you were never really vegan. You just ate a vegan diet because you wanted the health benefits. You don't give a fuck about the bigger movement. You don't. It's you don't really adhere to the ideology. So it's like they take the truth. They chase. They they mirror reality, right? Like these. They mirror what's real and what's powerful in their little movements, right? It's like yeah, it could be true. You know, so you have somebody who infiltrates a movement. You have, you know, you have somebody that tries to join a community. They say they're for a cause. Then it turns out they're just pussy turncoats, 
right? Like that happens. But the vegan movement, the whole thing is all bullshit anyway. So it's like the rhetoric you see, everything you see within it, it's just all these cults, they yeah. mimic power. They mimic real truth. And these people that speak for them, they mimic, like they just, it, it's just, it's pathetic games. You know, it's, it, it's, it's, I don't even know. I don't, I'm rambling now. No, I, I see what you're saying, man. I, my thing is just like, the live and let die, man, basically. It's just like, clearly, whatever you're spewing, whatever you're pushing, maybe it works for some people. I'm skeptical, but it definitely doesn't work for everybody. And I know, I know, and I know you know it doesn't work for us, and it never will. There's nothing you can do to change that unless you want us to suffer, right? And and I'm not okay with that. Yeah, well, it's, uh, veganism is about reducing the suffering of animals. Yeah, not the human animal, though. Yeah, well, non-human animals. <laughs> That's what's important in veganism. See, the, the thing is, with a vegan diet, I could care less what people eat. I think I would rather all these people eat a bunch of plants and keep the price of meat low. Yeah. But that is not what's going on. Veganism is a wedge issue because the world will never be fully vegan, and they know that. So they want to ration out lab-grown meat and cordon off all the rural land for them and their ancestors. I mean, it's a new feudalism that's being rolled in with the global corporate system now. Um, and people think it's just free market. <laughs> that's what's bringing this about. But this is like, to me, the, the issues of veganism, dude, I don't care if you want to eat a vegan diet. Cool. Go evangelize a vegan diet. Shoot up some heroin. Family, you know, my family still can't eat meat and that we can't have our cattle. No, we're gonna have really. problems, and that's what's really happening. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I have no love for the vegan agenda, man. But if somebody wants to be plant based, hey, it's your it's your life. Do whatever the hell you want. You want to snort some yay? Go on ahead. I don't get exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. But then you know the the free the free market stuff because I don't know. I don't know if you've been like at any point into like the libertarianism thing. Oh. I mean, I I sympathize with a lot of their ideas, but you know i don't believe in like full-on libertarianism <laughs> complete and utter freedom for everybody no i mean you got to have some responsibilities too so i'm not i wouldn't say i'm libertarian even though on many issues yeah i am yeah yeah it's funny because you know i forget why i asked that question um oh yeah yeah because a lot of people would say well if we just had free market and everybody all drugs were legal everybody could do whatever they want and it'd be all good. But then it's like, all right, well, what happens when your neighbor puts up a giant billboard of bestiality that your kids can see? Yeah, no. That's, that doesn't violate the non-aggression principle, right? right? So like Jay Dyer brought that up. I think that exact example when he, uh, when he debated Kokesh, when he debated Adam Kokesh, who, dude, he's a vegan now. <laughs> oh, God, whatever. No, I mean, you definitely got to, like – we no longer live in nature, all right? Like, that's long gone. We could have more natural existence, live closer to nature, but but those days are gone, man. We're civilized now, so we have to act like it. It is what it is, like it or hate it. Like, there are some limits on our behavior now and if we want to live in, like, peaceful communities and agree. But if some people want to establish certain communities where that's okay, yeah, take that somewhere else, go on ahead and, and do your thing, and... I'll support you in that, but I don't want any of that around where I live. You that's know? the thing about the global community is you have no say. Exactly. And that's what they've done with the internet, unfortunately. And the internet's cool. Like we get to share information. There's a lot of potential, but it's also allowed the dissemination of a monoculture around the globe. And that's what's kind of, that's kind of what I see as, you know, the enemy is not veganism in general. The veganism is just one wedge issue of this global culture Totally. That is crushing. I mean, it's just. I mean, it's it's just one wing of the uh, of a multi winged freaking disgusting creature. Yeah, it's it's just one one thing out of many, and I don't know. You can't fight it all, so I just picked this this thing because it hits closest to home for me, and yeah. you know that's that's why I go against it. But you know, I wish I never had to say anything about this. My channel would probably be bigger if I just did videos like Thomas Delauer, just boring freaking <laughs> four minute videos on. You know, uh, I mean, but you might need to put some needles in your ass, though. <laughs> <laughs> you need to. Yeah, true. 
But yeah, I wish I didn't have to. I wish I didn't feel compelled to talk out about this and to speak yeah. about it so much. But um, well, let's let's change gears a little bit then, because it's I don't know. Like I could I could do this for a little bit, but then I know it gets a little tiring. Since we're talking about the lower and and you know PEDs or whatever and the vegan diet, you because I made the statement in the past that like you can't build muscle on a vegan diet. Now, don't get me wrong. I think you could build some muscle, but what are you, what are your thoughts on this? Because you're into fitness and you were vegan. Like, what do you think about that? Does it, did, is, is it really up to who you are or, or do you, do you think it's essential to, you know, supplement with some, uh, that's funny. Cause it's like, I mean, on paper, it's well, why couldn't you build muscle on a vegan diet? You're getting all yeah. the amino acids, you're getting this and that, but the way it seems to pan out in the real world doesn't seem to be working out for a lot of these guys. I mean, you got Patrick Baboumian or whatever. You know, that guy was... Uh, she got fat once he went vegan. Got real fat, man. But it's yeah. like, oh, he's a strong man, so it doesn't matter. You can get fat on meat too. You know, it's like, there's all these arguments, but it's like, well, they all seem to get a certain deflation, right? Like, what about um, Bobby's world? Yeah, I mean, he got, from what I've noticed, he got cut on the vegan diet, but I didn't really see any, like, serious bulking going on right and i mean i'm pretty sure that he's gonna look back after he uh starts eating meat again and feeling a little bit better he'll probably look back at pictures and think yeah like i didn't really look well yeah um, you know you look at some of the pictures when he was like saying he was raw fruitarian and like oh, i'm building muscle on fruit that yeah, I, mean, he was, <laughs> I don't know if he said he's building muscle but he like a lot of the clips that he puts in put in his intros were him shredded but it was like this sickly shredded, you know, it's not, yeah. you know, and I like Bobby, like, I, I don't know, I mean, I'm not trying to trash him. I'm just saying the quality of the muscle, it's different, man. You like, you look at these dudes who are like really jacked on steroids, like these freaking um, Olympia guys, they get these quality of muscle that's just inhuman, right? I mean, they're using inhuman amounts of steroids and all kinds of crap uh, to manipulate their body composition. But like, dude, none of those guys are vegan. None no of these guys at high level bodybuilding. Not a single one of them is vegan. You would think with the popularity and the trendiness, at least one of these guys would have tried that shit and been like, oh, yeah, I'm vegan. I'm in Mr. Olympia. Yeah, I got eighth place or whatever, but I'm still – you don't see that. Yeah. It's probably for a reason. I don't think these people are building a lot of quality muscle with plant foods. And you look at anybody past a few years on a plant-based diet, they start to get health issues. So I don't think people are going to be building a significant amount of good quality muscle and maintaining it on vegan. So yeah, there's, there's some potential there. There's potential there, but obviously meat protein is superior. And it also probably depends on how well you assimilate protein from plants. Yeah. Well, I mean, dude, it's it's all hypothetical because we really can't know. You know, I mean, it's I mean, for each individual, we're gonna have different polymorphism and different uh inclinations towards different yeah. diets and body compositions, but yeah, I just don't see the quality of muscle on a lot of these people claiming to be vegan bodybuilders increasing, improving. You know, you see a deterioration, it seems, and then they end up going back to me and they're like, yeah, maybe it wasn't the vegan diet, but I started eating meat again. And they just leave it. I just go by like personal experience and I never stopped eating meat in my life. But I know that once I cut out the plants and I ate a lot more meat, I, I don't even work out, man. But like I just bulked up naturally with just walking around working you know what i mean i don't i don't build muscle to build muscle like i just work and i noticed well i didn't notice my wife noticed they're like you're just looking bigger all of a sudden your biceps are bigger and i'm like all i did is i just started eating meat i didn't even work out you know so it's like for me i mean you know if i were to engage in like muscle building bodybuilding whatever i just can't see myself doing it with like plant protein it's, it's oh, just silly really? Well, where you live what would you what would you have for plant protein beans i mean you know i ate a variety of plants uh well, think about it these people are like why how many vegans are there long term among ecuadorians like actual ecuadorians not these dumbass hippies who come through south america on their ayahuasca journeys like real ecuadorians in south america not some expat boomer who doesn't have kids who treats their dog like it's their child um like real ecuadorians i don't think they're vegan i have never met one no there might be some like bank teller wannabe model girl in the big city you know eating some vegan products because they're healthier but 
like full on vegans. I've never met any. I don't think they really exist in Ecuador. And that's, that's what's so telling you. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a disease of decadence. Veganism. It's like gout. It's like, all oh, it's this disease only spreads through affluent populations who are pampered and who don't have to move their bodies. The, the foods are coming though. I don't, you probably don't go shopping a lot. I see soya food. stuff and super. Yeah. yeah, man. There's fake burgers. There's some yogurt and, but shit's not selling. Not only is it expensive, like double, triple the price of the, the real thing, but uh, they also slash the prices over time because it's just not selling. What do you think about the responsiveness of Ecuadorians to these issues? Like, do you, <laughs> like, do you think, do you think that they will legitimately stand up for their rights if these vegan abolitionists tried to come obviously granted you know it wouldn't be for another 10 years down in ecuador at least but in the u.s you might see in five years them uh really increasing the uh, rhetoric about the climate crisis we gotta stop you go, we gotta we can only feed you we'll ration everything to you what do you think ecuadorians would do if that kind of rhetoric started pumping through here Honestly, I think Coca-Cola and Crisco will have these people on their knees with diabetes, heart disease, and all these diseases that they didn't have. And what I see them attributing it to already is, well, these we no longer have criollo hands, right? We don't have we don't raise hands on just corn like we used to. We no longer raise pigs out in the pasture. We feed them all this balanceado, which is concentrate for people listening. Yeah. Uh, I think they're going to be brought down to their knees with disease and this Western malnourishment uh, and these bad inflammatory foods to a point where they'll be ready to, to accept whatever solution to that's the, the problem, major. right? You get so inflamed and dumbed down. You yeah. can't think about these issues and you're also historically removed from the ability to be able to see why. Right. But here, I don't know, man, I, I might be on the, I might think, it would a lot of people, a lot of people won't. No, a lot of, because they're already noticing that these uh, what did Western Price call them, foods of commerce or something like that. Uh, they, a lot of people are already noticing that there's a problem because you still have people who live eating their ancestral diet and they're thin, young, muscular, you know, strong, and then you have all these people eating sugar and all these inflammatory plant oils, yeah. and so they see the difference. And and those people like to live out in the country. They like to have their own goats or cattle or chickens or whatever, and they do it the right ancestral way. So I think you always have some of that. But I think people in big cities, they're going, their metabolisms are going to be destroyed, just like it happened in the there Western are. world. I yeah. see them, dude. I like if so. I go to the sauna. This uh, there's a hosteria nearby. There, I go to the sauna there, and it's just like nice. They have a little pool in there, and um, these lojanos will come. And they same lojanos come like every week, right? So certain days, if like if you go on a Sunday, there'll be a bunch of people there from Loja. All these families, nice people, nice folks. But they're lawyers, you know. They're bankers. They're like, you know, they're the rich city folk. Yeah, skinny fat. Yeah, and they're all getting surgeries and stuff. And like this one guy's flying to the U.S. to get his, uh, you know, it's a, it, they're getting these constant surgeries. They have gut issues, they have sleep issues, you know. And you know, you tr talk to some of them, kind of help them out, tell them like, you know, go get the red light bulbs from the fucking hardware store and put that in your bedroom. And stop turning the lights on at night, stuff like that. But like they, they uh, they're eating the shit, man. They're eating the the salty papas and the yeah. Um, the french fries the garbage but this is what i mean you know once these people are desperate they recognize there's a problem they know it's diet related and then some you know skinny blonde is going to come on the tv and say i went vegan and look at me and blah 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 you know and if that's the message on the tv they're going to convince a lot of people in my opinion and it might backfire eventually but i think it's see the way i see ecuador it's like 10 15 maybe 20 years behind the western world yeah, so but the, what, what did the smartphone do though the smartphone kind of i mean <laughs> when we first came here there were no smartphones yeah it's it's accelerated it's bad, it's bad now you know they they get everything a little bit bit later and but it's, it's the same pattern you know what i mean it's just a few years later um and they're catching up so We'll see, man. I'm not too hopeful, to be honest. Even though I go I back do. and forth between like, nah, these people are gonna are gonna, these people because they'll lynch. There's lynchings, <laughs> you know. Like, these, oh yeah, yeah. In yeah. Ecuador, justice gets served not by the police, not by the justice system, 
but it's like shit goes down in your town. Someone's hanging from a light post. Someone gets caught stealing. They're buried in a backyard. You know, it's like, there's not stuff, you know? So I don't know. That's what's hopeful for me is the rural people here still stand up for what's um, for certain things. But yeah, the, the brainwashing is the, the hard part to deal with. Yeah. I mean, everybody's getting internet, right? Everyone has a TV and, and you've probably being like in restaurants, I don't know, out and about, you've seen some of this Ecuadorian TV and it's absolute garbage, man. It's from, yeah, it's, it's Carlos Slim TV, you know? Yeah. It's crap. It's so, you know, you know, Carlos Slim owns Clara. Is that the cigarette guy? Wait, who is Carlos that? Slim is the richest man in the world. He's a drug kingpin out of Mexico who owns the telecommunication systems of South and uh, Central and <laughs> Central America and Mexico. He's a badass. Carlos Slim is like, like he, like he calls Obama and tells him good boy, <laughs> you know? Damn. Yeah. So go figure. I mean, you know, we'll see, but I'm not the trends that I'm, that I'm seeing, even though they're not really catching on some of them, like the vegan diet, they're definitely trying, you know, like what, what corporation comes to this country where there's no demand for any of this shit and puts their shit on the shelves at double, triple the price. And they're trying to f force feed a market. They're trying to create a market. It doesn't exist. Why are you here? Right. They're trying to create it. And you know, if there's enough money behind it, they may succeed at least to a degree. Yeah. You just, you put them on the shelves, you eat shit for a few years and you get the brand image out. Right. So you, you make a big investment initially for marketing and it doesn't come back necessarily immediately. And you know, anybody in business knows this. So you have, you invest a heavy load. You, you know, you, you breach through the market and you eat shit for a few years and then eventually the trends get up. Big point, yeah. In the U.S., they did the same thing. You know, it's like you, you think people want the Impossible Burger. You think people want, what's it called, the, the other one, Beyond Burger? No way, man. They're paying Wu-Tang to freaking make it hit. They're paying, you know, they, they pay YouTube channels to make videos. They pay Forbes magazine to, you know, it's it's these, this uh, the way that the media works now, it's uh, it, it's very scientific. Like people, you, they know how to do it and... Um, advertisement yeah. is a science i saw a survey and granted it was only like 500 people or something like that but they did a survey for like new year's resolutions asking people what diet they're gonna try in the new year and keto carnivore were basically like i want to say around 40 percent of the diets that people were going to try and there was a bunch of other stuff like south beach diet all of them included meat but the vegan diet was only about two percent five percent responders said that they would you know try the the vegan diet so it's not it isn't as big as they make it seem definitely it's no, not my, my point that i was trying to make earlier though it's like <clears throat> they're they're trying to blow it up yeah it's like dude no the people the people who are really propagandizing this understand that the whole world will never be vegan and that's what the vegans are like oh you're so dumb this is not a there's no way that this is like uh, you know, a bigger plot by you know the global corporate controllers to to uh, make us all vegan. They know that it's like people won't go vegan. Yeah, that's that's so true. You, the whole world can never be vegan, but the whole world can be pushed in that direction towards the processed food and towards the lab grown meat, the lab grown meat and the ectogenetic births and the you know it's like that's the real end game. It's not just oh everyone's gonna eat vegan and grow local vegetables. No. They know you demonizing need animal agriculture. They want to eliminate animal agriculture and give you lab grown meat and have no rural people, pesky rural tribes to interrupt the flow of commerce yeah. to the cities. So you can't produce your own food anymore and you're just dependent on all these factories basically. So it, it's exactly. ridiculous. Centralized means of production, but this will be done in the name of equality as well. So it's, you know, that's how it ties in. It's a, it is a, you know, it's a Maoist style, it's a Marxist. Can, can you imagine the power you could cause global famine with like a push of a button? Oh, sorry, oh, no food delivery. Well, imagine if you have AI that knows everybody's linguistic inclinations. You're you're mapping people's consciousness in certain ways. They're using AI. They're using by AI. It's they they talk about AI like it's this real thing. AI is just programmed algorithms that perform yeah. tasks on the behalf of human beings. Mm -hmm. 
if you have these tasks constantly running and you have you know files on everybody you can just start deciding well this person is not very useful to society and this person is a dissident this person has ideas that we don't want around anybody that associates with them should possibly also be you know taken down or not so i mean you could you could start breeding the entire population like you could start selective breeding everybody yeah and i mean you could put shit in their food i don't mean to take this like way far but you know yeah. you could start experimenting on people by putting various things in their food just like yeah, you don't have to tell them like in thx uh, yeah. level 38 you don't have to tell them right um you need to take your pill because you're getting too fertile and your testosterone is rising if you have you know somebody's wearing an apple watch and you just i mean you can just make modifications to people biologically without them ever knowing it yeah. because all total, total control. control yeah that's why in blade runner in the tw in the smart city in blade runner where does the food come from? The food pops out of the wall that his AI girlfriend gives him. <laughs> and he loves her. And he has sex with her. She, the AI goes and selects him a prostitute to sleep with. Have you seen the new Blade Runner? It's No, but crazy. it sounds like Japan, bro. Dude, it's insane. The new Blade Runner film is the most horrific movie ever made. It I is lost, bro, I lost interest in Hollywood many years ago. It's just, it's depressing. But, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean that's that's kind of what is possible with with these systems, and that, that's why I think it's important that people think about these things. And it's like when you're accepting ideas like lab grown meat, you got to understand what's coming along with that. Who's making that lab grown meat, and who's going to control all the production of that lab grown meat? And that shit can't be helpful, man. It's just like it's a supplement. It just seems like another supplement. Get out of here with that. You know, if and if you think meat is bad, then why is this good all of a sudden? That just doesn't make any sense to me. But I, I guess I'm pushing the nature fallacy. You know what I mean? That's the appeal to nature fallacy. Yeah. Oh God, fallacy, fallacy. Yeah, but that's funny. Isn't that a funny argument? The appeal to nature fallacy, right? But then they ask them to define nature. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, what is natural? What is where does natural? nature end and man begin? Exactly. You know, it's like there's the the whole vegan. They, they, they have like the same cosmology as like neo-pagans, you know, like who like want to go back to nature, but they yeah. don't know what nature is. Like what is nature? And, you know, nature fallacy applies in a lot of instances, but not, a, it's not foolproof basically. And you could look this up. I've looked into it. It's, it's not considered foolproof. So there are contexts, contexts where what's natural is good, obviously, but like, for example, diet. I mean, you don't see people putting gorillas in the zoo and saying to themselves, hmm, can we tweak their diet a little bit, see if we could better it? No, they try to mimic genetically create this mutant creature out of a human and a pig. Oh, well, that's <laughs> we probably shouldn't do that. Let's not mess with nature. Appeal to nature fallacy. Totally. Yeah. No, like every scientist knows that you have to feed this animal whatever it eats in the wild. Otherwise, you're going to run into problems because they've done it and they found out that if we feed gorillas these biscuits, then we got to give them colonoscopies in, in five years. You know what I mean? Like they can't they can't handle this stuff. You got to feed them their natural diet. Why should humans be different? Like this is this is an omnipresent truth in when it comes to all animal species we know this there is no dispute in science if you are a carnivore you need to eat this diet or you will have problems now when it comes to humans though nature fallacy the, the their use of fallacies their logical fallacy the, their use of logical fallacies in the vegan argumentation among, amongst these debaters is, is totally fallacious it's yeah totally it's a fallacy fallacy that's what it is it's a fallacy fallacy they but got the list fallacy, of, fallacy, they fallacy, 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 fallacy. and it's given every single dummy like it's like every dummy has the same script now and they're able to posture in a certain way to try to sound right that's why i'm i'm kind of black pilled on the whole debating on the internet thing with a lot of people because they just the level of dumbed down like the the language has been so retarded so the appeal to nature fallacy or they'll say uh oh well that's a straw man well you're like you can say something you can make an argument and then tell somebody that they're an idiot your argument is not negated by you at the end of your argument telling them, but you won't understand this or you will pretend to not understand this because you're an idiot and you're an ideologue. They'll say, well, that's a straw man. No, that's not my argument. That's tacked on at the end because I'm sick of you and I want to tell you you're an idiot. I'm it's just insulting you. You're not, you're not a straw man, rather a, uh, what's it called? A, uh, 
Um, ad hominem. Yeah, yeah it's ad hom. <laughs> it's ad hom, bro. Yeah. No, just because you call someone a name doesn't mean that's an ad hominem. It has to be central part of the argument, right? right? If you say you can't, we shouldn't listen to you because you're a dummy, yeah. right? Or your argument is invalid because you believe this. You know, or, or you say like we shouldn't listen to what Ivor Cummings has to say about cholesterol because he's sponsored by the fast food industry. That's an ad hominem too. It's like you have to judge the message for what it is. It doesn't matter who pays the bills. Like I mean, it could, but that's not an argument. Do they say that Cummings is somebody tried to say he's sponsored by fast food? Yeah, this this one guy. I don't even want to give him a shout out, but this vegan channel made this video and he had this eureka moment because the guy that Cummings is sponsored by, he had his own personal, you know, heart issues. So he fixed his diet. He learned that keto is the way, at least for him, and he wants to promote that. And he's paying Ivor Cummings research basically into cholesterol and all that. But that guy also provides fast food with all the tools they need to make the food, all the, you know, uh, appliances. Which oh, is, uh, all right. So, if, so somebody on this guy's Patreon has a job that. No, 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 not Patreon. He's sponsored by this guy directly. That's the guy that hires him, which okay. is, but okay. My argument for that is, okay. He's supplying the fast food industry, but the fast food industry like McDonald's, that's now offering vegan options, right. Or promising to, they're going to adapt to whatever the people choose to eat. It doesn't matter what diet the people choose to eat. The industry is going to adapt. So no matter what food you're cooking up, whether it's healthy or it's garbage, those, that guy's never going to out, go out of business because they will always need these appliances anyway. So this it, I'm, yeah, this is the point I'm always trying to make. There is no meat industry. There is no big meat because the entire you have industrial agriculture and it's all based on grain products tyson general mills like all uh, these companies all purchase seeds from cargill and monsanto they're buying these it they're patented seeds and it's a consolidated system in which even the meat now is fed the grain all they want to do is remove the meat because the cows do have to be grazed by rural people for 90% of their life. So they want to cut out the, the need to even have rural populations. They don't want a peasantry. They only they want cities. They don't they give a shit what's for dinner as long as they have a fucking seat at the dinner table. Basically, they don't give a damn. That's Yeah, the people who own these big corporations, they don't care about selling meat. They just want to consolidate the entire flow of energy into their little system so that they have control of it. I mean, this is it's basic economics. It's not like this is it's not like this is some giant hidden agenda. It's out in the open. And yeah. people are like, oh dude, like no, no. <laughs> but even but even if that were the case and this guy had some sinister motives, well, judge him by the content of his information. Look at the research. And if he's bullshit, well, then it should be easy to, to debunk that. No, he can't attack the information because the information is legit. So he has to, you know, take the back door and, and backstab the guy, basically. It's it's an ad hominem. That's That, that was my only point. That's a true mm. ad hominem. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Mm -hmm. My kids just got home. I heard him pull up in the cab. They probably saw your wife, Margaret. Totally. I'm hearing uh, some serious egg laying action going on there in the background too. You hear the hands? Yeah, the the egg song we call it. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the rooster is not very friendly to Ariana. She's got a funny relationship with him because she grabs the hands probably, and he's like, "Hey, that's my bitch." The hands walk up to our house. The hands are so dumb. They're they're trying to like walk into our dog's mouths. Oh, they God. just they try to walk up to the doors. The retards. Yeah, but they're sentient, so that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, well, they're the same. Like RZA, RZA said that we're all the same. Chickens, rats, me, you. <laughs> they even put a rat in that video, that PETA video with RZA. They showed a human morphing into a rat as RZA goes, we are all the same. Oh, God. <laughs> I used to respect Wu-Tang, but... It, it's I know, just... right? So sad. He still, RZA did, it did have some sick beats back in the day. Yeah. I used to like RZA's verse. RZA used to have some really good verses too because he would throw some real stuff in every once in a while. He actually knows a lot of or knew a lot of what was going on, but I think he's just too dumb now to really see. He, like, if you call too someone much. a genius, and if somebody who's puffed up with pride, if you call them a genius and then offer them some money for doing some shit, they'll, they'll eat it up. They'll you know what it, it is? Like when they were smoking Brick Pack, 
and then they they were woke, right? But now that they're smoking this super duper government hydro, they're just dumb the fuck down, man. <laughs> Dude, I saw Ice Cube video yesterday. Yeah, Have you seen the Ice Cube Funkadelic video? No, man, I stay away from that shit. I I haven't watched like any new shit in so long, but it popped up for some reason. Ice probably because I watch Nature Boy videos. They recommended Ice Cube Funkadelic song, and it was like. It was weird, man. Um, he, he he did this verse, and it's like, I heard weed is legal. Um, I forget what he what it was. Just a really dumb rhyme. I heard weed is legal. Now you grow that shit, feed your people, and he repeated it like twenty times. And they were just showing, you know, like the weed leaf um, psychedelic morphing in front of this chick, and then like she opens her mouth and it drops in. It was this. Uh, like kind of ink blot filter. It was weird, but it was it was some programming for sure, man. <laughs> it was like major, more, more of the uh, smoke more weed, you guys. Yeah, just smoke repeating the same shit over and over. And I mean, you know, you could accuse Bob Marley of the same nonsense too, even though he was still very much uh, pushing the right message at the same time. But this whole like selling drugs to the people i mean that happened in the 60s and 70s that was all planned i, I mean fuck it i'm preaching to the choir i'm sure you know yeah well there's there's probably like a few people listening to you know <laughs> yeah you know what's it's nice doing doing chats with you because you can just uh talk about anything right you, a lot of people they've got niches that they'll talk about and they don't really i'm a jack of all trades master of nothing yeah i'm also i'm a jack of all trades too yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. But um yeah, maybe on that note we should uh cut this short. I didn't really even intend to be online this long, but uh yeah. I don't know. I, is there anything else you wanna No, it was good talk, man. It was fun. Yeah, it was... Totally. Thanks so yeah. much for coming through, man. Um Bart just I, I'm not gonna say he flaked it, just it was a miscommunication on our part. So thanks for Bart, filling Bart, in. Bart, uh, uh, he's you know when you come late to a party and like you if you're the first person at the party and you're waiting yeah you no know, you're you're probably not that fun to be around right yeah but you show up a little late it's already popping <laughs> you, walk in, you got your you got your fucking background music that's how bart rolls he wants he wants to show up a little late to the party when when the crowd's already there Bart, yeah, Bart's he's carefully engineering the image with his uh, with his tardiness. Oh, Bart's not stupid. Bart's not stupid. He's not a stupid guy. He's, yeah. he's a nice guy to talk to. But yeah, man, thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm thanks for uh, filling for Bart. And thanks to uh, everybody who showed up. Uh, this will uh, this will happen again at some chat doing. Usually when I do these streams, I'll look at the chat as I'm going just because it's interesting. For the, you got a bunch of people in the chat. You got 122 people listening. Right on. Well, you know, if you ever find yourself in a, in a hole where somebody uh, stands you up, uh, if I'm available, I'll be glad to uh, step on for a few minutes. And you know, Yeah. Well, this is a good time, too, because my kid, they go to the market in the morning, and I know. Totally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Saturday morning is a good time. It's all quiet here. They just got back. You probably hear them rustling around the back. Yeah, it's same here. That that's why I do it at this point in time because it's I have my peace basically. Yeah. Je <laughs> Jessica says you're celebrating as soon as your wife leaves. Yes, we have a there's a, there's a party over here. <laughs> yeah. All right, dude. Thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, man. All right, Thanks I'm out. for coming through. Take it easy. Yes. Thanks, everybody, for uh, coming through this impromptu hangout. Was glad to have Tristan on. And, um, yeah, we'll do it again some other time. So have a great weekend, everybody, and catch you on the next one.